Now this is the important slide which deals with what are the key learning objectives of the presentation today. Come to think of it, the first and the most important question which comes across anyone's mind is how do you determine the taxability of royalty and FTS? Okay, and how does the interplay of the act and the treaty takes place while examining whether or not a particular payment is taxable as royalty and FTS or not? While each of these aspects will be looked at in details, first let's understand this particular part. How do you determine the taxability? The way it works is first we need to identify whether or not a particular payment is taxable under the Income Tax Act as a royalty or FTS on that. If it is not taxable, end of the matter, but if it is taxable, then we see whether or not it is taxable under the treaty. Of course, one point you need to bear in mind is that if a particular payment is not taxable under the Act as royalty or FTS, is it going to be taxable under some different head? The second question which is important is understand the meaning of royalty and fee for technical services. Now here again the question which comes up is that you may have a definition of royalty and FTS under the Income Tax Act and you may also have a definition of royalty and FTS under the treaty. The first thing you need to find out is whether or not the payment constitutes royalty or FTS under the Income Tax Act. If it does then you need to find out whether or not the particular payment is taxable as royalty or FTS under the treaty. Right? It is only when the payment is covered as a royalty and FTS that Article 12 is triggered. If it is not then maybe you need to see whether it would amount to other income or is it a business profit. The third one is the right of India or the source state to tax royalties and FTS. While source state may be different in different examples, in this case we've assumed that if there is a person who's there in India and he makes a payment to a person in US, right? India has a right to tax these payment if they arise in India, right? In this case, India is known as the source state and then US is known as the state of residence. The next one is what is the right of US or the foreign company, right? Foreign company's resident state to tax royalties and FTS. Now suppose India while making the payment to the US applied a withholding tax of 10%. The question which comes up is can US apply a tax rate let's say 25% and collect the balance 15% tax from the company. It is not only a question of right what is equally important is whether the US will give a credit for the taxes which have been withheld in India. How the entire mechanism for taxation credit works that's something which we are going to look at in article 23. The next one is tax implications if royalty or FTS is accrued but not paid. Now generally if you see under the Income Tax Act provision the taxation of royalty or FTS is triggered at the time of accrual right, or payment whichever is earlier. right. But many treaties provide that the taxation event is to be deferred until the time when the payment for such royalty and FTS is made. Now how would these two reconcile not only from the perspective of the foreign taxpayer but also from the perspective of the Indian payer who's making the payment. That's something which we are going to look at as a part of this presentation. The next one is how does the existence of a PE impacts the taxation of royalties and FTS. 
Now, in many cases, what can happen is that if there is, let's say, for example, a US company which is getting some FTS from an Indian company, this US company may also have a permanent establishment or a PE in India. Right? PE is relevant in order to tax the business profit, where the tax rates which are applied are 40% on the income right the question which comes up is in case there is a PE would the taxation be as per the clause relating to royalty and FTS which is typically article 12 or will it be relating to the PE which is article 5 read with article 7 as a general rule while we will discuss this in detail you can keep a point in mind that unless an article article 12 tells you that if the non-resident has a PE in India, then the taxation has to be as per Article 5 read with Article 7. The taxation continues to be governed by the provision of Article 12. The next point, what if the royalty or FTS which is paid is more than arm's length? So let's say if you had to pay an arm's length royalty, the amount that should have been paid should be $150 right but the company the Indian company actually pays $200 to the non-resident the question which comes up is insofar as article 12 is concerned is the taxation going to be limited to $150 or should it be for $200 normally the general rule is that article 12 is going to apply only to the payment which is equivalent to your arm's length payment and then obviously the case laws on royalty and FTS. Without the case laws, the entire rules and regulations which are available may not be of too much use. And the reason for that is that these actually tell you how whatever we have discussed in the seven boxes before have been looked at by the courts in India. So let's move on to the next slide and understand the impact of this.